Hello everybody, my name is Dratnos, and in this video we're going to take a look at the new Shadowlands class changes that have been announced. Um, this is a very long post, so there's a lot going on here. I'm going to read through a lot of it, uh, give a little bit of context where I can, talk about the changes where I do know stuff. I don't know things about every class, but I know things about a lot of classes. Um, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to like read full ability text or anything, but I'll give you some context when they talk about abilities coming back with what the abilities used to do and what I think are going to be powerful new changes coming in for classes. Uh, so first off in this post here, which I'll link in the description if you haven't read this yourself, um, some discussion about the philosophy of Shadowlands, how we got here from WAD and Legion, um, BFA, and kind of one of the things that they're doing in Shadowlands, which is going back from spec-specific design more towards class-wide design, which to me is it's an interesting direction. I think that a lot of the abilities that they're putting kind of class-wide aren't going to be super impactful for like end game, you know, high level mythic plus, high level rating, but it'll probably affect you out in the open world, out while you're questing, uh, being able to have access to like arcane explosion again or whatever, I'm sure. Uh, even as not an arcane mage, you may you may end up having a spot where you use that as the other specs. It just, it's, the, many of those abilities are probably not going to make their way into like rotations, like you probably don't need those bound for many mythic encounters. So. It's an interesting spot. For me, this is something that a lot of people have been really excited about. Not actually something that I care that much either way about. Um, but let's get started. We're going to go class by class now and talk about what is changing. So we'll start off with Death Knight, because that's the top one of this list. Um, so Death Knight's general changes. Death and Decay is going to go class-wide, which Death and Decay was already in Unholy and Blood in BFA, but it's going to be in Frost as well. And a big thing here, Anti-Magic Zone is coming back. Now, Anti-Magic Zone is like a, it was a 60% against magic damage, damage reduction effect in an AoE. If that makes it back to the game in that state, Death Knight is going to be very, very, very good. Uh, like multiple Death Knights is going to be a very good thing to have in a Mythic Raid comp. Uh, that's going to be extremely powerful. My suspicion is that we're going to get a nerfed Anti-Magic Zone of some kind. Um, you know, maybe like a 30% or 20% or something, 60%, it's just so much. Um, like, imagine Mythic Nazoth with Anti-Magic Zone at 60%, you could like stack people up and, and stack in like clumps of three and drop your anguishes on top of each other, and it'd be very easy to do that mechanic, and, uh, you know, the ticking damage wouldn't be hurtful at all. You could use one of these and let like three countermeasures explode with no problem, so, uh, in the, in the Mythic phase. So, uh, the, it, it's a really, really strong ability. If it comes back at 60%, uh, it's gonna be... Death Knight stacking is going to be powerful on a lot of fights. Furthermore, every Death Knight will once again be able to tap into unnatural powers to temporarily turn themselves undead with Lichborn. So that was like a defensive that uh, made you immune to some stuff, but also slowed you by 50%. Uh, that's an interesting one. And they'll also all have Raise Dead again. Uh, Raise Dead was an unholy only thing in BFA. Uh, coming back to Blood and Frost, I guess is going to be interesting. Um, the new Sacrificial Pact ability enables Death Knights to perform a forbidden ritual, sacrificing one of their undead minions, siphoning their health, and causing them to explode and deal damage to nearby enemies. So you're going to be able to kill your own ghoul to heal and do damage. Uh, and then you, also everybody's going to get Chains of Ice, not just, uh, not just Frost. I think actually more than Frost has it right now, maybe, but uh, at least more, more than Frost will have it going forward. Okay, Blood Death Knight is getting a new ability here, Blood Tap, which uh, every time a Bone Shield charge gets used, they can, it refreshes, uh, and you can use it to make runes. Interesting. Uh, and they're also going to get Rune Tap Baseline, which is very cool, because right now Rune Tap is something that uh, you would want in a lot of cases, but you can't often take it because of where it is on the talent tree, so uh, good to see that Baseline. That These are going to be things that are should be pretty powerful for Blood, and especially Mythic Plus, I think both of these are going to be helpful. They're also getting a new ability here, Relish in Blood, which is a heal based on the number of Bone Shield charges they're on. Frost Death Knights are going to be able to use two one-handed weapons as before, or they're going to be able to use a two-hander, which um, it used to be that the playstyle between uh, one-handed and two-handed Frost was pretty different. Uh, so we'll have to see if that comes back or if it's not a, uh, an actual impactful difference. Uh, they're all getting Frostworm's Fury instead of needing to talent it. And Hyperthermic Presence is a new talent that halves the runic power cost of abilities for a moderate amount of time. That's going to be an interesting one if, it, if it's not on the same row as uh, Breath of Syndragosa, because that sounds like it's a really good combo with Breath of Syndragosa. It doesn't seem like it'll have that much use outside of Breath of Syndragosa, because just like getting to spam out a couple more Frost Strikes seems unlikely to be that important, but 
Uh, if this gets you, you know, 10 extra seconds of breath when you use it, that's going to be a big game. Unholy is getting some more undeady minion stuff. So Gargoyle is going baseline, which is something that a lot of people have requested for a while. Uh, the talent for Army of the Damned is going to give you a Magus of the Dead now, uh, which is currently an Azerite trait. So that's an Azerite trait that's kind of going back into the baseline here. Uh, and also you're going to be able to get Army of the Dead from your Apocalypse, or sorry, a Magus of the Dead from your Apocalypse, which is also how the Azerite trait works right now. One nice thing here is that Death Coil and Epidemic are going to reduce Army of the Dead's cooldown, and they're going to reduce uh, Apocalypse's cooldown, which right now, right now, uh, Death Coil reduces Dark Transformation's cooldown, but Epidemic doesn't, which just creates this weird spot where, like, in AoE, you don't actually get cooldown reduction, but in single target, you do. So it's nice to see both of those are going to give cooldown reduction here for whatever effects they, they grant cooldown reduction for. Um, and Mastery is getting changed to increase Shatter Damage and Pet Damage, which is, it's getting pretty close to just all their damage is getting increased by Mastery here, but whatever. Demon Hunters uh, are getting, so Pain is getting turned into Fury for Vengeance Demon Hunters. Immolation Aura is going to be available for both specs, presumably Baseline. Right now it's already available for Havoc as a talent uh, that is commonly picked. Havoc's getting a new passive, which gives them a little more Fury. Uh, and their Dark Slash talent, which has been a meme for a while, is turning into Essence Break, uh, which is now also going to buff Blade Dance for a while. Vengeance Demon Hunters are going to get Demonic, and felt so Fell Devastation is going baseline, and Demonic is going to turn you into a demon after you Fell Devastation. So Fell Devastation is going to be like I-Beam for Havoc is, uh, and Demonic is going to then make that turn you into a demon. Fair enough. Uh, and they've got a new talent that rips out soul fragments from up to five enemies around the Demon Hunter and immediately consumes them, so that's going to be a pretty big on-demand heal. Um, and they also have one that's going to let Fell Devastation do more healing and convert overhealing into an Absorb Shield. That's kind of cool. I, I wonder if there's going to be spots where you're going to be able to use this for, um, you know, something cheesy. It's it's possible. And, it, like, you can imagine if you're hitting a lot of enemies, building up a really big Absorb Shield that then lets you absorb some kind of stupid large hit. I don't know, maybe maybe some kind of one-tanking strategy on some fights could be possible with this. So pretty cool. We'll, we'll have to see what the other... It looks like there have been quite a lot of changes to this spec, so I think that's pretty good. I think Vengeance had a lot of... A lot of things in the... A lot of power in the Vengeance build was concentrated in a few specific places, and that made it so that there wasn't too much that changed about the spec with what you talented, with the exception of Spirit Bomb, uh, which they're trying to move some variety out of that. Druids are... Okay, look... If you play Druid right now, you already have a lot of keybinds. In Shadowlands, it looks like you're probably going to need like 10 more. All Druids are going to be able to use Ferocious Bite, Barkskin, Cyclone, Stampeding War, and Iron Fur, regardless of their active spec. Heart of the Wild is returned as a talent, which is something that makes you more effective at doing your, your off-roll stuff, uh, your stuff in other forms. Affinity Talents are getting an additional utility ability. Balance is receiving Typhoon, Feral Affinity gets Maim, Guardian Affinity gets Incapacitating War, and Restoration Affinity gets Ursul's Vortex. So this is interesting. Some of these abilities were already in other specs in BFA. Um, so like Guardian, for instance, had Typhoon and Vortex in BFA. Now it looks like they're probably going to have to choose between Typhoon and Vortex as part of this affinity. Uh, so for some specs, that's going to be a little bit of a, a, a nerf. But Balance, for instance, is going to be able to play with Typhoon and Talent into Ursul's Vortex. And that's going to be a, a very powerful combo that they'll get. Looks like Resto might have to go Balance Affinity to get Typhoon. This is kind of weird to me, because, like, sometimes you want the damage reduction from Guardian Affinity, and now you're going to have to choose between, like, you're, you're going to have to choose between, you know, getting that damage reduction or getting the Typhoon. Uh, and I'm not I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. Um, might be It might be a cool choice. It might be an interesting choice. Or it might just mean that you end up feeling like you never have everything you want uh, in a bad way. I don't, I don't know how that's going to feel. Balance is getting a big rework here, so they're going back to Wrath of the Lich King style rotation, where uh, you kind of chase a buff, where you know you'll you'll grant. So your Wrath is going to make you want to use Starfire. Your Starfire is going to want to make you use Wrath, um, and that is interesting. It's interesting that we're seeing Starfire come back as well instead of Lunar Strike. So uh, kind of a a theme that we're seeing with this whole set of changes is going back towards. You know, older nostalgic names for abilities. Starfire. I wonder if we're going to get the old Starfire animation back. That one, that was a wacky animation back then. Um, and yeah, Star Surge is going to extend current Eclipse, whereas Starfall is going to extend your Moonfire and Sunfire effects. 
And Starfall is now going to be an AoE around you like it used to be. Um, so you just you have Starfall active and stars will fall down on stuff near you. This is going to be interesting. Starfall in BFA has been a bit of a meme. It's been awful for the whole expansion. Um, and it currently is used on like seven or more targets. And below that, you just don't even bother pressing that button. We'll have to see what that number ends up being in Shadowlands. But I do think that changing it is cool. And I, I think that what it's likely to, the way it's likely to function is you're likely to like have it toggled on as much as you can and then mostly do your single target stuff. Uh, and it gets, to, it means that you're also going to have this kind of like dot extension play style, which usually feels pretty good when those work well. So I think this is a good direction to bring Moonkin in, but I'm not a Moonkin player. So uh, we'll have to see what they think about that. Feral is getting Blood Talons reimagined. So Blood Talons was this ability where you'd get like free regrowths that then increased your damage. Uh, and now it's going to be, you have to use Shred, Rake, and Ferocious Bite in quick succession to increase the damage of your next rip. I actually think this is really cool. I think this is a, a cool design where like, you know, you have to do kind of a combo of abilities to make the, the last one hit harder. Um, so I hope that this talent is good because that seems like it'll be a fun one to play. Guardian Druids and Shadowlands can once again embrace their Brutus, boot, bleh, embrace or bear hug their Brutish side with Berserk, reducing the cooldowns of Mangle, Thrash, Growl, and Frenzied Regen substantially, while also having the cost of Iron Fur. So this is, seems like a very, a very tanky cooldown here. Uh, and Renewal is also going to be a talent choice they have, which was a, a castable, or I think it even auto-cast when you got low enough, uh, self-heal. Swift Mend is going to go back to the old way it used to work, where it consumed a hot to do all that healing like instantly. Um, and it's all, they're also getting back Nature Swiftness to get instant cast on some heals. Uh, and they're also getting Nourish back, which is a, it's a big heal, and now it's going get, to be getting triple mastery bonus. So a really big heal for when you're bombing heals into a tank. All right, let's move on to Hunter. Hunter is getting Arcane Shot. So Arcane Shot, one of these abilities where it's like, is this going to fit into rotations? Like, is this actually going to be a button that all the specs want to press? If if not, like, why? It doesn't really matter to me that the, you know, Survival is going to get Arcane Shot. I mean, I guess it'll help them pull from range, maybe, but... Anyways, I, uh, they're getting back a bunch of abilities. So Eyes of the Beast, which let you like walk around as your as your pet. Cool. Hunter's Mark. I uh, have to see what iteration of Hunter's Mark comes back. Kill Shot, which is an execute. Uh, that's going to be a strong thing for, for Hunter to have. Scare Beast and Tranquilizing Shot. Coming back for all Hunters to use regardless of their active spec. So this is an interesting set of utility abilities. I imagine a lot of these aren't going to be ones that you're going to use all that often, though. Stable Size significantly increased. Cool. Beast Mastery Hunter is getting uh, a new talent that makes the their beast put a bleed on the target and also take more damage from the pet for a while. Uh, so that's probably going to be a good thing to combine with like Bestial Wrath and stuff, I guess. Scent of Blood is being reimagined. The passive now activates when Bestial Wrath is used, granting two charges of Barb Shot to bloody a target. Uh, so, okay, this is cool. So this is kind of something that... Um, the Primal Instincts Azerite trait does right now an Aspect of the Wild, and it's being moved over to when you press Bestial Wrath, giving you some charges of Barb Shot. Cool. Venomous Bite takes the place of Spitting Cobra and comes with a twist. When Bestial Wrath ends, a Cobra will come to aid the, the Hunter in combat. The Serpent's power will increase based on how many times they used Cobra Shot during Bestial Wrath. I love abilities like this. I love ones where you like try and build up a, you know, a powerful unit to use at the end based on how well you did during the damage time. It's kind of like um, Diver's Folly or, you know, Demonic Tyrant, those kind of abilities. So uh, very cool to see Beast Mastery getting one of those. Marksmanship uh, are getting Deadeye, a talent that makes kill shot better. Uh, and then they're getting Binding Shackles, which is a talent that makes enemies rooted by Binding Shot, which is, I guess, now going baseline. Cool. Uh, to deal less damage to the hunter for a short time. That's going to be like a questing thing. Hard to imagine that going to be something you're going to use all that much in high-end content. Volley is going to be... So Volley, I guess, is just replacing multi-shot again. <laughs> um, we're, we're, we're back to Volley. And it's, it's so Volley is just an AoE. You put it on the ground and it you know does some damage there. Uh, and then it's going to give them the trick shots buff. I'm disappointed here to still see the up to five additional targets thing here. Um, five target caps... I'd like to see those go away or be introduced to everybody. Uh, I don't think it's it's very good design right now that like half the classes in the game can AoE any number of targets and then randomly some classes are just unable to AoE 
um, on big AOE. I think I think that's a shame. So uh, I'm disappointed to see that, but uh, it is what it is. And then survival, basically no changes announced here except damage is going up and costs are going down for things. So uh, in interesting that they've kind of decided here that the, I guess the problems with survival were numbers based. I was hoping to see maybe more of a rework for this spec, but maybe it's it's still in the pipeline. All right, Mage is getting Arcane Explosion, Fire Blast, Frostbolt, and Mirror Image to all specs. Again, these first three, it seems unlikely that... I don't really see where you're going to use Frostbolt as an Arcane Mage, really. Um, I guess maybe if you want to slow something, you're going to do that. So maybe, but uh, it's mostly going to be something that at, at, at most you're going to use in like rare PvP situations, rare Mythic Plus situations, and questing out in the world. Probably not something you're going to do in you know most high-end content. They're also getting back Fire Ward and Frost Ward, which were absorbs of that type of damage. So Fire Ward was like a, it was an absorb against fire damage and Frost Ward was an absorb against frost damage. Alter Time is coming back. This was a really popular thing. So when you cast it, you'd get the ability to go back to the same health and mana and the same location, um, either when you cast it again or after a short duration. Temporal Shield, a PvP talent, did kind of half of this, uh, but Alter Time, the full thing is coming back. So that's a very powerful ability. Um, and then they're also now going to be able to get Focus Magic, which gives an ally a, a spell crit bonus. And then when the ally critically hits with a spell, the Arcane Mage receives the same boon for a short period of time. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here. I guess all mages get Focus Magic to buff an ally, and then if you're Arcane, you also get the buff when the ally crits. Interesting. Um, I, I don't mind... Power in, power in specs being in these kind of buffs that you give to your friends. I, I'm, I, this, as long as this one is one that you don't... Like, I don't, I don't like the buffs like Arcane Intellect and Battle Shout and especially Chaos Brand and Mystic Touch where they really make the first of a certain class good and the second bad. I don't like how that affects, you know, group design. Um, but this seems like something that is kind of interesting and cool. I wonder what classes it's, or what specs it's going to be best to combine with. Um, maybe you'll just get two mages giving it to each other as well. That could be funny. Arcane is getting... So clear casting is going to be able to stack up an extra time. That's going to give a little bit of uh, quality of life to that rotation. Savant is going to do more than just Arcane Barrage and Blast. So that's to all spells. That's going to be uh, a cool quality of life increase as well and a good, I think, AoE increase also. Touch of the Magi is going baseline, uh, and Enlightened is a new talent that rewards mana management. Uh, so this is basically, this was an Azurite trait, this expansion, I think. Um, Equipoise, I think. Uh, and it's going baseline. It was one of their best Azurite traits, so uh, cool to see that going baseline. Or I guess going talents rather than, you know, going away when the Azurite system goes away. Fire is having Ignite redesigned. Fire Blast now, when used against an ignited enemy, spreads it to up to eight enemies. To me, this just looks like Ignite is just going to kind of be auto-spread now. Like, instead of having RNG about when it spreads, you're just going to... Like, you always you hit enough Fire Blasts in the rotation right now where it's just going to basically be igniting everything nearby your primary target. Blast Wave is going to do some more damage and increase slow duration. People are still not going to talent that if it's against Shimmer. Shimmer is just so good. And Kindling is getting buffed as well. Kindling already something that is useful in some spots. Uh, and Pyroclasm getting buffed. That's nice to see. Pyroclasm was a, a fun play style where you'd cast some hard-casted Pyroblast and uh, they would do big damage. So cool to see that getting buffed. Hopefully that's something that you can use on some spots. Frost is getting a change to the way that Flurry works. So previously you would, you'd get this thing where you could Flurry and then if you got closer to the target, you could um, get two abilities into the Flurry debuff. And now they're just making that go away. Uh, they're making Flurry just last a long time and cause your next two spells to affect it. Um, so, interesting. Uh, I, I guess this, this is going to remove some of that gameplay, which I personally actually really enjoyed, like, blinking around to try and, you know, move, make the projectiles work better. But I understand that that's a, a weird thing to be in the game, and uh, I can see why they wanted to get rid of it, but a little bit of a shame uh, from my perspective. Monk is getting a lot of things going baseline here. So Spinning Crane Kick, Fort Brew, Expel Harm, and Touch of Death are going, going for all monks. Touch of Death is going back to the old design where it just kills anybody who has less health than you. Uh, and each spec is going to benefit from dealing damage with Touch of Death as well. All specs are getting their Invoke baseline rather than Talented. 
Brewmasters and, and, and actually Windwalkers are both going to be able to use one-handers or two-handers. Brewmasters are getting back Shuffle, uh, which increases the amount of damage that's staggered when the monk uses one of uh, several abilities, uh, including Blackout Kick, which was Blackout Strike this expansion, going back to being Blackout Kick. Celestial Brew is a new ability that absorbs damage based on attack power, so that might be, we might have three brews now, we might have uh, Fortifying, Purifying, and Celestial, or sorry, not Fortifying, uh, Iron Skin, Purify, and Celestial. My guess is that there pro there's probably only going to be two brews, there's probably going to be Celestial and, and like Iron Skin, uh, my guess is that for or Purifying Brew is probably going away, uh, they haven't said that here, but that would be, I, I'd be surprised to see three brews being live. That's not based on anything, that's just that's just a guess, uh, given that I don't, I think that this fills a pretty similar role to Purifying Brews, so I think this is going to be the new uh, thing in that spot. Brewmasters can once again challenge their chosen target with Clash. Uh, so that's, Clash is like half Death Grip, half Charge, where you meet them halfway, pretty cool. Uh, and you get Black Ox, you get to invoke Nyu Zhao, the Black Ox. Uh, which helps shoulder some of the Brewmaster's stagger damage, cool, uh, and deal some extra damage based on that as well. And when they kill something with Touch of Death, they clear all their stagger, very cool. And they get a new talent, Celestial Flames in, in AoE, which just makes Breath of Fire do more damage, and they can spread it to things when they spin in Crane Kick. Exploding Keg coming back as well, probably not the first version of Exploding Keg we saw, where it gave like an 100% blind, but now just like it, because so in Legion they actually nerfed Exploding Keg because it gave you an 100% chance for the enemy to miss their next attack, and then you could use it on some AOE attacks to just make them do no damage to the whole group. Um, so I imagine this is going to not return at that power level because that was really strong in a couple spots, uh, and instead became like a 99% damage reduction on their next ability. Mistweavers are getting Invoke You Lawn, and they're getting Touch of Death, which also spawns healing spheres if they kill stuff. Uh, Chi G is coming back as a talent, and that is strengthening their physical damage moderately and healing their allies for part of the damage inflicted on enemies. So this is a fist weaving talent, uh, and it makes Mistweaver monks immune to movement impairing abilities, so they can constantly be on the move during combat. So this is going to be, I guess, the um, the way of the crane replacement here. Windwalkers again can choose two handers or one handers. Uh, they can do Invoke Xuan without needing to talent it. And they get Touch of Death, which will make cheese spheres when they kill stuff. Uh, the text here says that the Windwalker can consume to perform devastating blows. The jury's still out on exactly how devastating those are going to be. Uh, and Dance of Chi-Gi, which was an Azurite trait, is going baseline, which is a proc that let you do extra spinning crane kicks. Um, and that was something you used even on single target. It was pretty good. Paladin, getting a huge number of abilities baseline. Blessing of Sacrifice, Hammer of Wrath, Sense Undead, Shield of the Righteous, Turn Undead, and Word of Glory. Or sorry, Turn Evil and Word of Glory. Uh, and then they're also, everybody is going back to a Holy Power Builder Spender rotation. Uh, so Rep Pally had this, this expansion, but Holy Pally and, and Prop Pally are going back to that, uh, where there's going to be damaging spenders probably, and also Word of Glory and Shield of the Righteous ones. Uh, that you can use all specs, which is really weird. It's really weird that Rep Pally is going to get to use Shield of the Righteous, but cool, cool. Uh, maybe you only have a Shield equipped, actually, for that to work. I don't know. Uh, you also get Auras, so Concentration Aura, which reduces the duration of Interrupts and Silences. Retribution Aura, uh, which is redesigned to proc wings when allies die. Very cool. And then Crusader and Devo, uh, which are, you know, standard. Divine Purpose is coming back, which Divine Purpose already exists for Rhett and for Holy, and it's just going to be the same thing where uh, you sometimes get a you sometimes get a free Holy Power spender after spending Holy Power. Holy Avenger is going to let you make a lot of Holy Power, and Seraphim is going to let you use Holy Power to get a secondary stat buff. Uh, so kind of similar to how it works right now for Prop Pally, where you can choose between Seraphim or Shield of the Righteous. It's going to work the same way kind of for everybody. Holy Glimmer of Light is going base or going talent, which is cool. Uh, and they are still getting aura mastery, so auras are going to be more important for Holy Pally than they are for the other specs. Prop Pally, this is a really cool talent. Shining Light. Uh, it's a passive that makes actually it doesn't even look like this is a talent, it just says passive. Um, makes the next word of glory free whenever judgment crits. So uh, depending on what word of glory looks like this expansion, this could be huge amounts of self and AoE healing. Rep Pally's Wake of Ashes going baseline instead of talented. 
Uh, and the fact that it stuns undead, probably going to be more useful in Shadowlands than it was in BFA. Uh, so this might go back to being a pretty useful CC ability a lot of the time. And Empyrean Power, which was an Azurite trait, is going Talent, uh, where that was an AoE Divine Storm proc. Priest is getting Mind Blast, Mind Soothe, Power Infusion, Shadow Word Death, and Shadow Word Pain for all specs. Uh, and Power Infusion can be cast on allies. This is, that's probably going to be useful. Disc Priests are getting... This is actually a lot of cool stuff. So Light's Caress, this one... Uh, not sure about this one. It'll depend on the number, but... Uh, it makes Barrier do a heal up front and a heal at the end. The cool thing, though, is the redesign of Shadow Covenant, uh, where it now heals five people, but instead of putting a healing absorb on them after, it increases the priest's damage, but they can't cast holy spells for a while. Love this design. This is this this looks like it's gonna be really cool. We're remain to be seen if it's good, but it's a cool design. I'm excited about it. Uh, and they're also getting Mind Blast, which is going to do a lot of damage, a lot of healing, and Absorb Shield, but a significant mana cost. Love this as well. This I think Disc is going to be really cool with these. Um, this looks like there's going to be a lot of gameplay to deciding whether or not to use these abilities and when to cast them. Holy Priest is getting Circle of Healing Baseline, and they've got a talent now to empower it. We'll have to see if this changes their rotation. Uh, and AoE healing looks like it probably will, uh, at least if they talent this. I don't know if that's going to be the best strategy for them, though. Shadow is getting a new talent, Death and Madness, where they get resets on Shadow or Death. Um, looks like only if Shadow or Death killed them, so probably an, an outdoor world kind of talent, but still pretty cool. Uh, and they get a bunch of insanity from that too. And Surrender to Madness is reworked for the third expansion in a row, uh, where now you can cast while moving, insanity gets 100% more, but if you don't kill something while you're in it, then uh, you die. So... Pretty cool. I, I think this is a good design to land on with this. I'm excited to see how this plays out. Rogues are getting poisons back, uh, and Shiv is coming back as well. And they can get Pickpocket to find ingredients to mix into their Crimson Vial. Kind of weird. Um, so Shiv is basically going to be Toxic Blade for Assassination Rogues. Uh, and they're going to get Ambush back as an opener, and then Blindside, instead of being some kind of weird Execute talent, is going to be Ambush Resets which happens more often when you're an Execute. Uh, and Shiv can get a talent called Toxic Blade, uh, which gives it a shorter cooldown to, so that you can do it more often. But it, Shiv is basically just going to be... It, it says mirroring the gameplay of Toxic Blade, so I bet it's just going to be the same thing, but with a new name. Outlaw is getting a change to Roll the Bones, where it's no longer a finisher, and it's just an ability on a cooldown. I think this is a good choice, because... Uh, the Outlaw rotation for the past couple expansions has been built around re-rolling aggressively. And I think it's better to make it so that you can't just keep spamming rolls as your finisher. Uh, and instead, you just kind of do the rotation with the roll that you've got. And then if you have a bad roll, as soon as it comes off cooldown, you can roll again. Uh, and that is still going to be reduced through Restless Blades as it works right now uh, on many of their abilities. Kidney Shot is coming back as their stun, and Between the Eyes is no longer stunning as in, and is instead going to increase your crit damage against the target. Seems like a good change to me as well. The rotational stuns were um, were pretty OP in, in Mythic Plus. Evasion is going to be their defensive, and Repost is going to be a talent. Evasion is better than Repost in most cases, so... Well, not, not in most cases, but in many Mythic Plus cases, there are things you can dodge but not parry, so Evasion was better. Um, like dead, the, the, the shot on the last boss of Toldegore, for instance, you could dodge that but not parry it. So Outlaw getting Evasion back is actually, I imagine they're going to keep this talented most much of the time uh, and then repost for, you know, spots where the actual attack back is useful at all. That's never been that much damage, though. Maybe they'll buff the damage now that it's a talent. Uh, retractable Hook is now also going to increase the speed of your Grappling Hook. So cool, you'll hook around a little faster. Subtlety is getting some... Fairly big changes here. So Find Weakness is going to be baseline. And it looks like there's going to be kind of this effect where you multi-dot it around. Uh, and then you can consume it with an AoE finisher uh, called Shadow Vault. Which Vault it might be like a Death from Above type ability. Who knows? That'd be cool. Uh, and Dark Shadow is going baseline to make Shadow Dance do more damage. And Rupture is going to replace Nightblade. Nobody really liked Nightblade anyway. So it uh, makes sense to get back to some of the Rogue baseline abilities here, I guess. Shaman are getting another, this is another spec that's getting just a thousand new abilities baseline for all specs. Chain Heal, Chain Lightning, Healing Stream Totem, Flame Tongue Weapon, Flame Shock, Frost Shock, Lightning Shield, uh, and Searing Totem. 
Elemental and Enhancement, both are not going to have Maelstrom as a resource anymore. I think this is good. I think that they, so they've identified here that they don't want every spec in the game to be a Builder Spender spec, and this is going to be one of the first ones that they're bringing back to not being a Builder Spender. Uh, so instead, you're going to decide when to Earthshock and Earthquake based on building up stacks of Fulmination, which presumably you get from Lightning Bolting, and Seismic Thunder, which presumably you get from uh, Chain Lightninging. Uh, to enable Earth Shocks and Earthquakes to do more damage. Echoing Shock is also going to be a new talent that you can cast to then have your next ability double cast. Pretty cool. Uh, enhancement. So Enhancement we all, is also getting the Maelstrom removed. Uh, they're getting some new abilities. So Maelstrom Weapon coming back. Flame Tongue Weapon and Wind Fury Weapon also coming back. You can choose, it looks like to suit the situation at hand, looks like you're going to have to choose between the two of these. I imagine there's just going to be, you know, a, a general best choice, but maybe they'll find a way to make it so you actually switch between them for situations. Maybe one will be an AoE option and one will be a single target option. Hailstorm is uh, being redesigned and Searing Assault is also a powerful fire attack, striking the foe for significant fire damage and causing Searing Totem to cast very quickly. Cool. Uh, and also makes Flame Shock, I guess, burn out faster. Overcharge generates five stacks of Maelstrom Weapon instantly and another stack every second for a while. And Stormkeeper coming into Enhancement here uh, to let you do instant cast Lightning Bolts and Chain Lightning Spells as an Enhancement spec. So very cool. Um, that's that, that's actually, this is interesting to see this come into a spec other than Elemental. Um, this is a really fun ability though, so it's, it's gonna, I, I think it's gonna be cool to let Enhancement Shamans do some Lightning Bolts with this. And they're getting Elemental Blast, which uh, is a that was a spell that an Elemental has had in the past, uh, and it is now something they can do to cast something, another another damage spell from afar. I don't know if it'll have the same functionality as it does uh, now, where it gives you, like, a random stat enhancement. At least that's how it used to work in Legion. I don't know what it's going to do now. Um, but it looks like they'll also be able to make it instant cast, or, or at least a fast cast time, uh, which... Stormkeeper's also getting that, so Maelstrom Weapon. It looks like this playstyle might be based around, um, it's going to be based around, like, Maelstrom Weapon stacks, getting that up to enough to get instant cast uh, versions of your range spells, and then using one of those, and then building up Maelstrom Weapons again, and then using another instant cast thing that normally has a cast time. Uh, this looks pretty cool. I'm, I'm pretty excited to play with this new enhancement design. Resto Shaman getting Earth Shield baseline, rather than needing to talent it, and then you can talent it to... Uh, Expend Earth Shield on a target to heal them and nearby allies. Still waiting to see something like a, a tank defensive cooldown for this spec. Um, so something like, you know, an Earth Shield having a damage reduction component uh, would be a really nice thing to see for the purposes of, like a, a, pat, a percent damage reduction component uh, would be a, a cool thing to see for Resto Shaman to see them ever show up in Mythic Plus. Warlock getting Curse of Tongues and a bunch of other curses as well. Uh, and they're getting, it looks like, Demonic Circle Baseline. Tongue Tide is going to be a talent that makes spells uh, apply a Healing Absorb on targets that have Curse of Tongues. Cool. Affliction. Okay, so a lot of changes here happening to Affliction. UA is no longer a thing that you spend a Soul Shard on, and it no longer stacks. It's just another dot that you maintain on things. Uh, not sure how I feel about that. I, I really like the way that UA would, like, you'd stack UAs on targets, but... Um, we'll see if they come up with something else to do there. And you can now cast Malefic Rapture, which deals damage to all enemies affected by periodic spells, increased for each periodic effect on the target. So, uh, this is kind of like a, in the space of Summon Dark Glare, where the more dots that you have out, the more damage this is going to do when you cast it. Uh, but unlike Dark Glare, it's just, you cast it once and it looks like it just, probably every dot that you have out is going to ping its target for a certain amount when you cast Malefic Rapture. Uh, and so the Seeds is coming back. Good. Uh, so the Seeds was an unfortunate victim of Affliction Locks being really overpowered in Legion. That has led to them being... The fact that that went away has made it really hard to play this back in Mythic Plus. So nice to see that coming back. Demonology. Dark Pact is going to absorb even more. It's kind of a... If you ask me what Demonology needed, if you ask me which abilities in Demonology were like powerful already versus which ones they needed to look at... I would not have told you Dark Pact is where they needed more power. I would have been like, yeah, Dark Pact, that's fine. That's already a nice big absorb. But okay, it's going to be an even bigger absorb. They might be able to survive some stupid one-shots with this now. Uh, and Dark Fury 
has a new effect where you get, it, it's basically going to further empower Shadow Fury by making it a bigger AoE stun. Also kind of a, also kind of a whatever. So <laughs> two kind of whatever changes here for demo. And Destro, Fire and Brimstone is going to generate two Shoal Shard Fragments for each additional em enemy struck by Incinerate. So a small amount of changes coming out here for demo and Destro. Um, not sure how I feel about it. Here in, the, in this part, they explain that uh, they, they're making relatively minimal changes to demonology and destruction. So I don't know. We'll have to see if, the, if those kits end up feeling good in Shadowlands. I think that they could, uh, if they, especially if they get some you know, legendary effects that are cool. Um, but I, I, I was a little worried about seeing this. I, I was thinking that maybe they, these effects were ones that maybe didn't need a full rework, but could use a couple of changes. Uh, and finally, Warrior. Warriors getting Execute, Hamstring, Ignore Pain, Shield Block, Shield Slam, Slam, Spell Reflect, and Whirlwind, Baseline. I assume that many of these effects are going to require you to have a Shield Active, like Shield Slam, Shield Block. Uh, spell Reflect, very powerful thing to have Baseline. That's going to be massive uh, for, non, for the Warriors that didn't already have that. Challenging Shout, which is an AoE Taunt, and Intervene, which was like a charge you could use on an ally, are returning uh, for all Warriors. Shattering Throw is back, which was, it was a throw that um, broke through immunities. Like it would just shatter Divine Shield or whatever and Ice Block and stuff. Um, with a new twist, it deals devastating damage against foes protected by an Absorption Shield. So I wonder if this is instead of that old immunity breaking effect or in addition to it. Lastly, Double Time and War Machine can now be used by everybody as a talent. Double Time is a double charge. And War Machine was, I think this was when you killed stuff, although I don't actually remember Arms is getting Piercing Howl, which is an AoE slow, and Cleave is being redesigned to a button that you that lights up when you hit three targets with Whirlwind to put deep wounds on everything in front of you. Uh, and they're also getting a Deadly Calm redesign, where you can press Deadly Calm, and then you get to use four abilities with no rage cost, uh, and increases their maximum rage by a bit. So I wonder if this is going to feel kind of like Lucid Major does now for Arms. Uh, if so, cool. I think that, that playstyle is good. Dreadnought is now taking on the Seismic Wave Azerite trait, which makes Overpower do a frontal line AoE, and with Sweeping Strikes, it'll do two of them. Cool. Fury is getting Fervor of Batter Battle, uh, where they whirlwind, it was a whirlwind empowering talent uh, for arms back in Legion, and now it's going to be a one for Fury as well here. And they'll also be able to learn Onslaught, where an enraged warrior brutally attacks an enemy for a large amount of damage and generates some rage. That sounds like it's going to be the single target option, and this sounds like it'll be the AoE option. Frothing Berserker has been reimagined. Now when the warrior reaches 100 rage, they gain haste and movement speed over a few seconds. That's kind of like how it worked back in Legion, uh, and I'm happy to see that. I loved that play style of like hitting 100 rage and then using a spender instead of spending at 75 or whatever. Wrecking Ball returns the talent, which gives the warrior a moderate chance for their next whirlwind to do a huge amount of damage. And fresh meat causes Bloodthirst to always enrage you the first time you strike a target with Bloodthirst. That's going to be really cool. I wonder if this is going to be something that you can, uh, that'll ever be the right move for like ad fights. Um, my guess is probably not, depending on what it's against in the row, but maybe. Prop Warrior is getting uh, a best served cold to make revenge deal bonus damage, especially if it's a free revenge. Menace is going to make Intimidating Shout knock back everything except for the primary target. Cool. Uh, and they've got Indomitable to passively increase the warrior's max of health by a moderate amount, and Spending Rage while the ability is active will heal their wounds. Okay, this part I don't really understand. While the ability is active, but Indomitable passively increases the warrior's maximum health. So maybe it's also a button you can press that gives you this Rage Spending uh, for healing, kind of like Lucid Major again for Prop Warrior, so I like seeing that built in. Uh, still not entirely clear on how this works, though. Uh, and Never Surrender increases Ignore Pain by an amount scaling off of Missing Health. Fair enough. Uh, so all in all, a bunch of changes to classes coming out here. You can, of course, take a look at this whole list yourself. I hope, <laughs> hope this video hasn't been too boring, but I wanted to just kind of read through these things with you guys. I hope, hope you've maybe learned something about how all these abilities work. I'm pretty excited about most of these changes. A lot of them are ones that don't matter to me, but of the ones that do matter to me, most of them are positive changes. So. I'm happy about these the, the design that they're going here, and I, I like the direction. I like the amount of communication here, and I like the I like the general design philosophy being communicated this way. I personally didn't mind spec focused design instead of class focused design, but uh, as long as the specs remain you know different to play, 
uh, that's going to be enough for me. And I'm happy to have some more stuff that is spread across the whole class. So cool by me. This has been uh, this has been a fun video to make. I'll make more videos talking about Shadowlands. I'm going to make one about the Covenant ability system as well in the next couple days. Uh, that's another thing that we learned about recently. And I'll probably be making some more videos as more of these updates come out. But uh, for now, that's going to be the end of this one. Remember to like if you like the video. Check out my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.